Well, joining me in Doha is a former nuclear scientist with the Iraqi Atomic Energy Commission, Ahmad Khadouri. Good to have you with us. First of all, help us to understand what is actually happening. Is radiation rising or are investigators just getting better at recording the real level? They are getting better. They're using uh, instruments which will detect higher levels of radiation. So the level hasn't actually changed? Is that what you're saying? No, or? there's leakage, which is serious. Uh, the, there's 1,060 tanks, stainless steel water tanks, that are holding the water, which they keep pumping into the, into the uh, damaged reactors and the uh, uh, spent fuel storage pools. So that water, when it comes out, it's ra radioactive, very so radioactive. Is that, I mean, the question I'm getting at, the water coming out of that particular tank, is the radiation level rising? In the outside the tank, yes. Inside the tank. So that's a, that's a big deal, isn't it? It is a big, well, it is a problem, a big problem. Uh, they, they have 1,060 of them, and apparently they've been there for two years, and some of them have rusted or they are leaking, mm. and that's a lot to look after. But the point is that it's within the plant. It's not outside the plant. It's not, except it's going into the sea, into the Pacific Ocean. And the only people who have suffered are the fishermen, uh, because the levels of contaminated fish last week have, has risen. So, so some of this water is getting out. It's not just confined to the tank and the plant, right? Yes, yes it goes into How the... How much of a threat is it, other than, as you mentioned, to the fish? Well, as far as uh, the public, they are not accepted. They only eat the fish, and the fishermen cannot catch the fish. This shows, though, that the problem is not really under control. It will it? not be under control for, it's estimated, between 40 and 100 years from now. That's a long time to wait. For yeah, that's what the experts estimate. Now, in the case of, um, um, uh, of Russia, Chernobyl, they simply buried the whole hmm. plant, one plant, with cement, like a, like a tomb. And they still have to keep worrying whether anything goes underneath. Here, there is a lot of groundwater coming from the mountains, from the rain. And every day, about 300 tons sweeps under the plants, takes some low-level radioactivity into the sea. And that's difficult to control. Does now, that open up the... I mean, the idea of something sitting there for 40 to 100 years, I mean, another major catastrophe could unfold because of another, I don't know, natural disaster, another meltdown? Well, if there is another earthquake, a serious one, six, seven, eight or nine magnitude, that would rattle all these 10, 1,060 tanks, it would rattle the, the, the damaged cores, spent fuel, who, whose structures have already weakened. Yes, that's a potential very, very serious threat if another strong earthquake hits the same area again. It looks like foreign help is being invited now to come and deal with this. Will that, yes. will that speed up your very scary timeline there of 40 to 100 years? Well, the, Inter the International Atomic Energy Agency, IEA, has been uh, have, they have sort of um, chastised KEPCO for not really giving all for information. And they've been telling them about these tanks for some time. And now, it's suddenly, it's, the level is raised to three. And IEA is not that pleased mm -hmm. with this kind of monitoring of the, of the situation. They are going to assist with their experts. But they are facing a huge problem, difficult, very difficult problem to solve. And I don't know how much bright new ideas they might throw in. Uh, it's, it's yet unknown. Scary situation. Thanks so much, yes. Ahmed Khadouri. You're welcome.